Another idea from the Course is called True Empathy, which is really just staying with the Christ, staying with what's real and true, regardless of the circumstances, or regardless of the form and the situations that you're faced with. And one of these uh, places I'm just speaking on, I was giving examples from my own life on how striking true empathy is. Like, like the Holy Spirit uh, pouring through me, you know, whether it's at a funeral, or I'm at a funeral and I'm in total joy, and everyone else at the funeral is, is in grief. Uh, that's, that's an example where Jesus is never saying, you know, just blend in with your brothers and sisters and do as the Romans do. If they're grieving, then grieve. You know, if they're in fear, then be in fear. You know, if they're hurting, then hurt. False empathy would have us empathize with our listeners. Oh, you poor baby. What? Oh, that's terrible. What did they do? They left you. Oh, that's terrible. You know, it's much of our communication has been false empathy. A, a huge percentage of our we're trying to connect through false empathy, and Jesus is going, mm-mm, and no, nope, that's not, mm, mm that's not my curriculum. I want you to stay in true empathy, I want you to always stay true to what's real and true and right-minded, and never deviate from that. So I've had experiences where there was a man dying one time, and, and the spirit, it was a Catholic family, and he was dying on the couch. And I found myself in that situation, and David would not have spoken up and mentioned the Course in Miracles in that situation with a dying man in his Catholic sister's home. It would have just been offensive. But the Holy Spirit, I just prayed, use me, use me. I was in my silent prayer, and sure enough, the Holy Spirit had a lot to say when the, the Catholic sister said, I'm uncomfortable with what's happening, you and your friends have to leave. That's when the dying man raised his arm and said, no, let him continue. And turns out the dying man had studied A Course in Miracles and was exactly wanting to hear every word that the Holy Spirit was speaking to him, but David would never, ever have spoken up in that situation. I was just in a state of prayer, you know, of alignment, like I'm here to be truly helpful, use me for your purposes. So that's also tied into our people-pleasing discussion, when you give yourself over to the Spirit, to be used in an uncompromising way for the Spirit, the Spirit is never here to offend, the Spirit is here to clarify, the Spirit is here to bless, to shine love in a very uncompromising way, and the ego doesn't like that at all. It's, it wants you to play small, and that's what's behind this this thick layers and layers of people pleasing is it's smallness, smallness, littleness, smallness, you know. And if the ego tells you ever to puff yourself up to get out of the littleness, that's grandiosity. You know, that's the other tact, the, the pride. Instead of being so little, puff yourself up and it's personal importance, personal pride. And maybe in a past life you had an ability where you spoke with great authority, and people seem to look to you, you know, and respect and, and honor what you said, and then some pride and grandiosity got mixed in there, and because of it, something happened. And then you just kind of shut down and said, never again. I will never again make that mistake. But you've gone into the closed down mode, uh, out of fear of going over there into grandiosity again. And I had lots of lessons with that too as I went through my life. Um, little, subtle little reminders of, of come back to humbleness, come back to, to <coughs> true humility, uh, true humbleness, and don't get off into trying to make something. Like even the first time I was invited to a course conference, um, the, the organizer of the conference, this was many years ago, invited me to send in my resume. I didn't even have a resume, and send in a photograph and do all that. And I put something together, I put it in the mail, and it got lost in the mail. Uh, the Holy Spirit's like, not ready. Nope, you can still tempted to misuse this, and you're, you're tempted to still have a Course in Miracles career. And I've told you, the Spirit said, you will not have a career. 
this is not a lifetime for a career. You will not have a Course in Miracles career. Uh, this is about waking up from this dream, and this is the point you've come to. And so I think that's part of what's going on in your mind as well. It's, it's just, it will take some confidence uh, in letting it be used in a true and helpful way, little by little, to gradually bring you out of that.